Welcome to the Kingdompreneur Life Podcast with your hosts, Doreen and Pat Martin. Doreen and Pat became Kingdompreneurs after being in full-time ministry with Bishop T.D. Jakes. They've raised two out-of-the-box thinkers, Elisha and Hannah, that caught the entrepreneurial bug at the early age of 15. Pat, also known as CP, is a real estate investor, speaker, author, and coach. Doreen, or Raw Doreen as some know her, is a board-certified holistic health practitioner and business strategist. Together they became top income earners in their network marketing company. They are passionate about giving you tools, ideas, and inspiration to take action in your business and spiritual life. Each week, they'll bring you an inspiring person or message to help you live a God-centered, holistic life that is uncluttered and rich with purpose. And now here's your hosts, Doreen and Pat. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Kingdompreneur Life podcast. And uh, Doreen is sitting right here next to me, and we have a super special guest, somebody that's so dear to our hearts. We consider him a son. He's been a son to us for decades basically <laughs> decades. Decades. that wow. sounds bad that makes them sound and us sound really old well yeah actually it's it's coming up on it'll be two decades so uh um but uh, babe greet everybody and do, do you want to introduce our special guest with us i do i do do so um god dropped this in my heart this week that i needed to interview this person and i think you're going to be so uh touched moved and most of all um, you're going to I think have a better understanding about a topic that is often um, taboo to talk about I think and um, I don't know misunderstood misunderstood and I think judged exactly I think one of the things that really helps um, is to have conversation open conversation and one thing that this gentleman is always um, really good about is open, honest, and transparent. That's his tagline because he is all about being open, honest, and transparent. So, um, welcome to the to the podcast. This is Jay Brett Salazar. Hey, Brett. Hey, guys. <laughs> hey, thank you for having me. I appreciate you guys, and you guys are amazing. I love you guys. Well, hold it. You're going to call him Brett, but we don't know him as Brett. We know him as Jaime. So, so. <laughs> All right, so tell us, how do you want to, in this, in this podcast, do you, do you want us calling you Brett so people can identify with you that way and move them forward? And we'll just keep it in the family that we uh, call you a Jaime. Listen, I love it when you guys call me Jaime because that's how y'all know me. But yeah, I'm branding myself as Jay Brett uh, okay. Salazar because it's funny my ministry. <laughs> so I just wanted to say that out there so people will, uh, it will anchor that Jay Brett Salazar in and so with that, Sal is our last name. There might be some Spanish background. So is there a, a you know, will there be any Spanish words spoken here? <laughs> uh, I'm still a work in progress, Pat, 20, almost 20 years later. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so do, how do we want to introduce this, babe? So people know our, our tagline, our hook line, so people are going to go like, oh, my God, they are really going to talk about this topic. Well, I want to just open it up first by letting um, Jaime share a little bit about how we met and how long we've known each other. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to tease people about this. Okay, mm-hmm. I, got, I got it, I got it. Well, first and foremost, thank you guys again for having me here on the broadcast. I really appreciate you guys. You guys are amazing. I love what all you're doing. So in a nutshell, basically how we met is I actually, a friend of mine took me to the Potter's House where T.D. Dick's Ministries was, and I actually, there was... Um, There was actually a revival going on in the March of 2001. I believe it was the first week. It was Noel Jones. And I ran out of flyers, and I wanted to make some more copies. I went to the Potter's house. One person directed me to this one um, room, or this this, uh, room where basically it was the hallway where I met Pat and ended up being involved in the homeless ministry, which was called Raven's Refuge at the time. So I went into this room, made copies, and then not even uh, less than a minute later, Pat comes in with this guy and was saying, hey, we need to help this guy. We need to put up an hotel. We need to give him some food. He has no money. So I had money in my pocket, and um, I said, nope, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm gonna, <laughs> I may need this money. And God specifically told me, he says, I want you to give him the money. <laughs> and I ended up giving him the money. And that's how I met Pat first. I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> and then you you, can't, you um, became involved in Raven's Refuge or the homeless ministry with Pat as a result? 
Yes. When I was in the when I was uh, in the services, and I was like, and they had uh, announced about these, you know, different ministries, and I'm like, Lord, what do I need to get involved in? And the Lord said, I want you to get involved in the uh, in the homeless ministry, and that's what I did. And I and then uh, one day I was in. This is towards the end of March, that 2001. Uh, you, I was in Pat's office, and you actually walked by with Hannah. You were on your way to uh, drop Hannah off at the children's ministry and and go back to the bookstore. Ooh, wow! I know. Boy, you can remember stuff. I don't remember that, but I, re I remember the copier though, because I, I remember I remember helping that family out. But yeah. And then. Um, you, I think, became part of our family, like you would come over to our house, and we just immediately felt a connection in the spirit, um, and knew that you, we always called you our, like our adopted son, you know, because you would come over, you'd hang with yes. us at the house, you'd hang with the kids, and then we moved, and uh, we were, I guess, planning to move uh, from Texas, and you decided to come with us. Share a little bit about that, like what made you want to come with us when we were making a move, leaving the state of Texas. Okay, so we actually, the, the thing happened was I was helping y'all move. We were out of storage. It was you and Pat, and uh, you had turned to me and said, hey, the Lord put you on our heart, and we want you to come with us. We're going to, you know, we're going to a new location, new ministry. This is, you know, we're going to just follow whatever the Lord directs us, and uh, we want you to come. So I said, and in my mind, I said, no, no, no. I thought you guys were supposed to be there. And I was, and I said, Look, Lord, I'm just going to keep praying. So long story short, I ended up praying to the Lord. And that was actually in March, when you, March of 2003, when you mentioned it. So I ended up praying to the Lord and I said, God, what do you want me to do? And finally, the Lord told me and said, this is the way I want you to go. Basically, you know, to um, pack everything up and just go leave everything else behind. And I said, Lord, this is a big step of faith. I said, all right, I'll do it. So I ended up putting my uh, resignation in because I worked at the doctor's office at the time. So I put in my resignation in um, probably a month and, and a half uh, in advance, and I ended up quitting in June 2003. Gosh, we have a funny way of doing that, don't we, babe? <laughs> we just pack up and we move and we try, oh. we're following the Lord <laughs> and trying to go to you know, wherever God has for us. Um, but anyway, okay, so let's get down to um, like – really the meat of why we're doing this interview. So recently I've seen you post on your social media about being gay and now you're straight. Can you talk about why you're doing this on social media? And um, just doesn't, doesn't usually go the other way around. I mean, you know, people are straight and then they, they come out and say, Hey, I'm, I'm gay now. So uh, fill me in here. I, I'm, I'm lost on your, on the, on the progress of going reverse the other way. Well, the Lord told me that he wanted me to speak out more um, on social media, so I've been doing that a lot. And the reason is because, you know, there was a brokenness, there was an emptiness, hopelessness, and everything that I felt. Like, even though I lived in the homosexuality world, you know, having fun, being in a relationship with guys was, you know, we had a lot of great moments. But it was really, the Lord was really saying, you know, it's, it's, it's from a loss to save thing. And, you know, we have to change our mindset and really understand um, and there's something that some people may not understand um, the homosexual, you know, lifestyle or, you know, just what they what they encounter every day. But when I was beginning to feel the emptiness and really just saying, OK, something's there's something got to be more to this, you know, and God really, really uh, touched my heart at the age of 23. A friend of mine invited me to church. And I went, um, and I remember sitting there, and then we did the altar call, and then I went up to the altar, and then I ended up accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord. And there was that very moment that I began to feel the Lord's presence, because I genuinely said, Lord, forgive me for my sins. You know, and I did that whole thing, and that's when I felt God's presence. And then I was in church for three months. And then I went back into the homosexuality, but overall, just turning my back on three different times, just experiencing just God's indescribable peace and his love is what really, really changed my heart. And that's what kind of really directed me into keep following the Lord, even though, you know, I had struggles along the way. Okay, so let's, <clears throat> so you, let's share a little bit, share a little bit about your testimony. So from what, I, what you just said, um, you were living the gay lifestyle and then in around 23 or whatever, you gave your heart to the Lord. Is that what you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. so so I came out at age 20. I came out at age 20. I was uh, finally, you know, free. I was like, you know, I said, I can be myself as a gay man. Um, I've always had the gay, um, 
you know, the uh, gay feelings as a very young child. But when I became age 20, I just started saying, you know what, I, this is, this is, this is who I am and this is what I'm going to embrace. So I started meeting a lot of amazing, uh, wonderful people in the, um, you know, in the gay, in the gay world. So what we call the LGBT. And I remember going to the club and I remember just like, you know, being with those people and just really being excited to be around music, dancing and people that really accepted for you for who you are. And also just for me though, I was, you know, a sex addict as well. So I, I'm like, I gotta keep it real. The sex was great with guys, but it was just to the point where it, you know, the sex wasn't enough. You know, I was trying to use guy related guys um, to fill up a gap in my heart that it was empty and I really could not do that. And it really, um, when I say like going back to the brokenness and you know, the emptiness, it was just something that, that, that was, you know, I felt lost. I didn't feel like I, I was completely loved. And I was, my heart had been broken to millions of pieces just throughout my journey. And being in that situation where I'm talking about age 23, going back to where I was saved, when that indescribable peace and that love came into my heart, I, that was something that I held on to because as a kid, I loved Jesus, but I didn't know why I loved Jesus. I didn't understand the concept of, I knew he died on the cross, but I didn't really have a personal relationship with him. Mm -hmm. So that from that journey moving forward, I began to say, okay, God, I'm, I just, I just, uh, I served God at the age 23 for three months, went to church. And then I ended up going back into a relationship with a, a, an ex-boyfriend. And at that point I ended up break, stayed with him for about six months or so. And we ended up breaking up, got into another relationship. And um, so at that point I had to turn my back on God again, but overall three times, meaning shutting the door of my heart, meaning like I wanted to lean on my own understanding. I wanted to rely on my own feelings. I wanted to go my own path and I was kind of stubborn. So, and I wanted to do what I wanted to do and, and learn. And then it was my journey um, to seek the facts, to bring clarity to the confusion and, 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 and really embracing God's truth. So just going back to what fast forward is just, um, it was just uh I don't know how else to express it. Let me see if I, so, I, so that I understand so it can help the viewers, to under, the listeners to understand as well. So you got saved and then you were, you know, like living for the Lord or however you wanted to say. And then three months later, you got back involved in a homosexual relationship. Is that kind of what you're saying? So even though you were saved, you were still drawn to that lifestyle. Yes, I was still drawn to the lifestyle. I was still... Um, I had an addiction, kind of like, uh, this is, I don't know if this is the right wording to say, but you know, when you, um, like if I was in the drugs too. So when I, when you're into drugs and you get addicted to something, um, even whether it's seasonal or for a long period of time, your body is getting used to it and it craves it. So it's the same way that I was exposed to that because I was a sex addict and because I had one of the relationship with a man knowing that my father left when I was five years old, which was the, which is the reason why. I was seeking, um, which I didn't know at the time, seeking the approval of a man in my life, which was in, in having a relationship with guys. That's a small piece of it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's what's really um, important that I listen to in your testimony, um, which I encourage everybody to go to your social media, Jay Brett's journey, and listen to the full, his full testimony, because he's just touching briefly on it here. But I, what I thought um, was really odd is how the enemy set you up from the time you were little uh, um, with all of the um, sexual things that he planted in your life. And the, the one thing that stood out to me when I heard your testimony was this, I don't know, you went to a house or you went somewhere and you opened the door and you seen a boy, as a young kid, you saw two people having sex. Like, you, you know, you just popped in at this house. Do you remember sharing that part in your testimony about you walked in the house and you saw this young kid having sex with a girl? Like, just how the enemy, like, just kind of, like, targeted you, it almost seems, and set you up to have such a big sexual and sex influence early on in your life. Oops, are you, you're frozen, Jaime it up okay there you go there you start over again Jaime uh, for the last 15 seconds you kind of froze up on us basically can you hear me now yes okay, now yeah I'm go ahead, ahead. Yeah. okay so what I what I did was I went to see my buddy next door and um, he was about nine or ten years old so when I went into that doghouse and moved the curtain that was on the entrance 
of the doghouse, I saw my buddy. He was having sex with this little girl. I don't know how old she was. She could have been around eight or something, or maybe she was older. I don't know. Um, but that's when I, you know, that was one piece that was these um, seeds of, of sex was actually, or I just, wow. seeds of sex was actually put it planted in my life. And, yeah. and it escalated from there. Yeah, there, like, it seemed like at every turn, the enemy was just planting something sexual in front of you. Or, and then, of course, your own, I don't want to you know, tell your story, but your own um, violations that people then violated you. you know? it just, it, I think that's just so important because I think that's one of the ways the enemy tries to start to plant a seed, those seeds when we're young through molestation, through just different sexual encounters, and it kind of shapes who we are as adults and what we think about sex and how we view sex. Absolutely. And then even in addition to that, when I was around five years old, um, at the age of five years old, I was molested twice, one by a teenage boy, which was at a, I was at a babysitter. My mom worked as a waitress. So she was, you know, she had to make money and my sister couldn't take care of me. So my mom left me with this random babysitter and she had several kids and one, her teenage son um, took me to the bathroom and said, hey, we're going to play this hide and go seek. I'm going to teach you how to play this song, but, but it's got to be a secret. So he took me to the bathroom and, you know, and then he molested me. And then there was another time where it was a 60 year old married man that um, had molested me as well. So these wow. different seeds that we're planting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah, and so whether you're, you know, it happens on both sides for females as well as, you know, males. And I think, um, you know, that, that sets up the brokenness and the dysfunction on how we view sex, on how we relate to each other. And, but we know that the Lord can heal all of that and, and help us to have a healthy perspective on sex and what, that, what a relationship is, you know, supposed to be like. Jaime, I have, a, I have a question for you. You brought this up earlier. I know. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. You brought this up, and uh, you, you touched on this about, about sin. And, uh, and I want people, I want, I want you to share with people your perspective. This is your story. And, um, and, and share with people your thoughts and your experience. Is this something, uh, being gay, uh, uh, was that something you were born with? Do you think it's, it, it's something you're born with? Do you think it's something that's external through the environment of being exposed to certain things that led you into that lifestyle? And, um, and then, then just recap cap it off with, with uh, um, how, how you came out of it and finding God's loving grace and mercy and forgiveness and, and dealing with the, the judgment uh, that, that so much of the church wants to throw a, a heavy label of judgment and almost a curse upon people that uh, deal with homosexuality. And, uh, you know, from, from our perspective, we say struggle with homosexuality, but I don't even want to be offensive to anybody listening and say dealing with homosexuality. So share with that and from your heart, if you would. Okay, absolutely. Before I say anything, you know, when I say that God is love, you know, the Bible talks about it in First John chapter 4, that, that if we do not know God, then we do, not, we do not know, if we don't know God, we don't know his love because he is love. And First um, Corinthians chapter 13, starting with verse 4, basically says love is patient, love is kind. You know, it gives you all these different definitions of who God's love is. And basically the people of the church are either, you know, they, I know the Bible says that homosexuality is abomination um, as it says it. But the thing is that some people take that out of, uh, they go to the extreme and trying to add more definition to that by, because of their fear, because of their hatred. And I'm not saying all Christians, just some Christians. And there's many Christians that I know that love, love. Um, love gay people and you know they agree to disagree in conversations but they still build a genuine connection so the thing is is that I for example I saw this one video and on, I was on Facebook and it was a recorded video where this young kid was coming out and, and telling his parents you know that he was gay and he must he was a teenager and I remember in hearing in the background the father and the mother I mean the mother went to attack him physically shortly after a while in the video but they were just saying that's wrong, you know, God doesn't want that, and they were being so hateful 
with their words. They were, and the Bible says that our words are a double, double-edged sword. You know, you say something, it's hurtful. It can either be give life or it can give death. You're going to be encouraged or you're going to discourage, belittle someone or, you know, just really love on them. So I think the things, the message is, is really just loving people and really understanding, even if you don't understand, just walking God's love primarily. But going into with me, as far as is gay a choice in God's eyes, yes, it is a choice. Um, and this is a, this is not to take everything out of context, and this is a very difficult conversation to have. But what I mean by that in God's eyes, because God says, you know, He is truth. He's the He's the uh, Father of lights. Meaning, like when the sun rises up and it, and it shines the light on everything, everything's exposed in truth, right? So you know where you're going, what you're doing, and just like you have, um, God's just amazing. Where his love shines the light and, and really gives you that truth. And um, this is the thing that I, this is, I, it's hard for me to talk about this part, but I'm, but I, I'm, I'm vulnerable enough to, to really, to really talk about this because it's something that's really needed is in guessing. I believe I stand with God. I believe God a hundred percent. I believe the Bible from Genesis to revelation. I, I, I agree with what God says because he is right in what he did, but going with a free choice. Yes, it is a free choice. But however, Going, I've known people that were never molested, and they they um, they were born. They had the feelings from as far as I can remember, as three years old, four years old, that they had the feelings towards another um, same sex. Me, on the other hand, because I was molested, I had someone rob me of my choice. I rob me of my innocence. Rob me of that choice to make to have sex with whoever or whoever I wanted to. And so many thing and so many things I hear on social media is. Oh, you're gay because someone molested you. No, that's, that's incorrect. You're leaning on your understanding. The Bible says in um, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him and he'll direct you in all your paths. So let me just say something because as you were talking about that, like, um, so it, even if you were not molested and you're living in the gay lifestyle, do you feel that it could be like a generational thing um, you know, because we all know that we have generational curses and things that my mom struggled with, I struggle with sometimes, sometimes th the same things that my grandmother struggled with, I struggle with, you know, so that spirit can, can come through the generational line and you can struggle with it today. Do you understand what I'm trying to say there? Yeah, there are, yeah, it is a generational curse. There is a spirit, just like there's a spirit of, homo, um, it's a spirit of homosexuality, it's a spirit of rebelliousness, a spirit of suicide, and it is the, um, it, I agree, it is, a, it is a generational thing. It's, there's a spirit behind, operating behind that, mm -hmm. and. And I like what you said too, like addiction, you know, like it, it's just like addiction. So whether you're addicted to the homosexual lifestyle or you're addicted to food. Like for me, my own, my own family line is like there's tremendous food addiction in my family line. So, you know, again, that's something that I struggled with in my own journey was food addiction and using food to numb out, using food to um, comfort those places in the heart that are broken. You know, like so to me, it's like there's, there's no difference. Whatever you're struggling with, whatever addiction that is, it's still, the core is still the same, right? There's a, there's a brokenness in the heart that Jesus wants to heal. Right. You know, Jaime, you were, you were sharing, and, and for those people that are listening, it may not, knowing the why, knowing the origin, knowing, you know, is it this or is it that? Are you born that way? Is it the, or a combination of both or whatever? I want people to understand they don't need to be hung up with that, but they need to be focused in on what and who is the person that's been given to us that can help us come out, that can help us uh, get better. And for some of you that are listening, you might be saying, well, that's offensive. You know, there's nothing wrong with me. Look, we all blow it. We all sin. Whatever flavor of sin you want to call it, we all have the need of a Savior, and that's Jesus. We all need the loving grace and forgiveness. And don't get hung up on uh, your slice of pie and, and so forth. Just turn and look to Jesus and take a moment. And it's as simple as just being introduced to him. 
And when somebody says accepting Christ, like Jaime was talking about accepting Christ as his and give, giving his heart to him and getting saved, it's just an introduction. And when you get introduced to Jesus, your life gets changed. You know how you meet people out there, Jaime, and you, your 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 life is impacted. It might be a uh, it might be a mentor, a coach, a boss, or whoever. You meet that person, and your life is forever changed because you met that person. And it's the same thing with meeting Jesus. And I don't want to take any more time away from the interview here, Jaime. I just wanted to add that in, and um, so so people will. You know, you know, stay tuned in here to listen to uh, the, the the rest of your story here. But go ahead, babe. So, so what can a parent do if their child tells them that they're gay? What, what do you think is the best way, coming from a parent's perspective? You know, like how how should we handle that as parents? Well, number one, you would need to get people that have already experienced that um, the gay lifestyle, but they're out of it, so that you can hear from their perspective. Educate yourself is number one. Um, and really love the child. Really love the child. Allow, instead of you trying to control and manipulate the station, manipulate the situation because you love them so much and want to do everything in your power to heal them and take care of them, let God take care of them. When you cast your cares into the Lord and you let him, uh, her, let him or her go on their own journey, it's really their free will to figure out what truth is. And just basically pray for them. Educate yourself and love them in the process, in their journey. I, um, I, you know, being we have two young kids, one 18 and one 26, some of the times they share with me different things that are going on in their circles and how sensitive you have to be about talking about different genders and like all this new stuff that was not around in our day, you know, um, I think it's just really, I don't know, unique. Do you have a take on to why there's just this big movement of people not sure of their gender gender now like they're they seem to be uh, confused about their gender and even the terms a very the terms that they use or or that are used you know and out there today some of it uh, is it's new to me and some of it I just don't even understand what that particular term means yeah like well I was talking with Hannah and she was telling me some of the terms are like transgender gender dysphoria gender binary you know like and they they don't want the kids today don't want to be put in a gender specific almost you know they don't want to be male or female so just this whole big movement that's going on or that seems to be coming forth now with our kids generation do you have you know a, a, a an opinion as to why there's just this big confusion Yes, I think, I mean, I don't know a whole lot about that, which I'm, one of the things I'm really educating on myself, and I've got other um, family friends that are live the formal homosexual lifestyle, that they're really knowledgeable in that area because they really are in front of the social media quite often in dealing with that. So that's one thing that I'm working on for me to build my knowledge. But it really goes back into where, in the beginning, where God says, you know, I created man and woman to be together, and that was his creation. And I think the reason why there's so much confusion is – the more we as people step away from God and we more push him out, the more depraved our mind and the more our heart comes um, gets, meaning sin can cover and blind us, um, not physically but spiritually, inwardly, and we don't begin to see that truth. And um, just like going back to the generational curses where basically God says, your ancestors, stop praying. I'm going to step back and move my grace, and I'm going to step back, meaning um, there's going to be curses that will come upon you because I'm no longer covering that area to help love you. And I think to break it down where it goes into the confusion of, you know, really a gender identity, your biological um, sex is um, undeniable from the day that you were born. You were either male or either male or female. And I think to take something out of con or something that God created and then to move into a position of changing and manipulating the body or even the mindset of thinking I have I'm a, I was born a boy, but I need but I have a feeling to be a girl. That's that's the confusion. I, and I don't I'm sorry, I don't really have a lot of answers for you on that piece because that's still I'm still learning. But the thing is, I do know in the base, God kept it simple, male and female. He loves that. And he and that's his purpose and his plan to multiply to you know be fruitful in our life mm -hmm. just like a husband and wife they have kids um okay so we've got so much more that i want to ask you but this podcast time is up so let's make a part two as well so we can 
have some more time just to get into some deep conversations here. So we'll close out this podcast, and don't forget to join us next week for part two. All right, guys. Blessings to you all. And uh, Brett, J. Brett Salazar, thank you for uh, coming on to part one here. And, um, and guys, we just want to say we love you. We're praying for you. And uh, please uh, uh, give us your likes. Send us your messages. Please give us your comments. And we would love to hear from each and every one of you. Uh, and I will also put in the show notes um, J. Brett's contact information, a link to his uh, J. Brett Journey page. And I know that he would love anybody that has any questions to reach out to him because he is more than happy to take some time to talk with you, to minister to you, to answer any questions that you may have. Isn't that right, Jay, Brett? Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Guys, we're going to sign off, but stay tuned uh, or tune in next week because I'm going to ask Jaime a question about what was it like uh, um, coming back out or, uh, or leaving the, the uh, homosexual lifestyle and what happened? Did, did you come into places where people were aggressive and angry and hateful and, and came at you? Don't answer this now, but he's going to share his story. And it's going to be kind of interesting um, to hear what he has to say, because I was frankly uh, surprised uh, at, um, at his story. So guys, that's what's going to come up next week. So we'll talk to you later. Blessings to you. God bless you. And uh, to him who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, to him be the glory in the church. And his name is Jesus. God bless you guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Kingdompreneur Life Podcast. Don't forget to join us next week for another inspiring episode. We'd love for you to head over to iTunes to subscribe and leave a review. We love reading all your comments. You can also connect with us on our websites. Pat is CoachPatMartin.com, just like it sounds. CoachPatMartin.com. And Doreen is found at RawDoreen.com. That's R-A-W-D-O-R-E-E-N.com. You can download your free gift that will help you live life uncluttered and rich with purpose.